we're going to cover the vector. And a vector is something that has both magnitude and direction. And being able to do both allows us to describe many things in our universe. This is Pat Dugas in the Channel 41 Weather Center. We have a weather emergency for you. A dangerous storm is traveling at 52 miles per hour. So if you had just heard that, you'd probably be screaming and calling the Channel 41 newsroom asking some serious questions. What's the number one question you have? Well, let's try a different version of this. This is Pat Duga in the Channel 41 newsroom. The dangerous storm we reported is traveling at a speed of 52 miles per hour towards the city of Mount Vernon in a northeast direction. If you're in that area, you need to take shelter immediately. So why is the second report better? Well, it's got more information. Here's the information it's got. A speed, a speed of the wind, 52 miles per hour, and a direction. It's heading towards the northeast. And that indeed is why we need vectors. A vector is a quantity that has both a magnitude and a direction where it's heading. In this case, the storm had a magnitude, its speed of 52 miles per hour, in a direction which we call northeast. Now directions can be represented in many different ways and we'll talk about a couple of the major ones as well. So vectors are represented by arrows. The length of the arrow tells us the magnitude of the vector. The longer the vector, the bigger the magnitude. The angle the arrow makes represents the direction. Now, there are several different ways to represent direction. Uh, in this case with the storm, it was a compass direction. Uh, northeast represents uh, north 45 degrees rotated clockwise to the east. There are many different ways of representing direction. We're going to cover two of them. So bottom line, a vector represents a magnitude, which is the length of an arrow, and a direction, which is the angle the arrow makes in whatever system you use. So let's look at some standard ways we describe and name vectors. Generally vectors are named with bold lowercase letters such as V, U, and W. Each of these would indicate a vector. Vector V, vector U, vector W. Bold and lowercase. If we just want to talk about the magnitude of a vector, we are typically going to use a double bar. In some rare cases, you might also see single bars, but we discourage that because single bars usually indicate absolute value. In magnitude, we use the double bars. That way we know we're talking about the specific magnitude of a vector. How long is that vector? So let's take a look at a vector v and try and find its magnitude. So we have a vector here that begins over here at the point 1 comma 2 and then the vector ends at the point 7 comma 6 and we'll call that vector v. Lowercase bold letter. So we want to find the magnitude or length of vector v. So how do we do that? Well, it's exactly what you think. Use the distance for it. We're going to find the distance between the points 1, 2, the beginning of the vector, and 7, 6, the end of the vector. And as you'll recall, the distance formula uses the Pythagorean theorem to find the horizontal and vertical distances. And it's simply a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And that will help us find the magnitude of this vector. So the magnitude of vector v, which you'll recall is the double bars, is the square root of the y2 minus y1 point, 6 minus 2, plus the x2 minus x1 points, 7 minus 1. In other words, it's the vertical distance squared plus the horizontal distance squared, and then we're going to take the square root of that. When we simplify, that becomes the square root of 4 squared plus 6 squared. Although I didn't use negative numbers in this example, Negative numbers are a prime source of errors in these type of problems. And so the magnitude of vector v is going to be the square root of 52 exactly, or in simplest radical form, 2 times the square root of 13, 
or approximately 7.21. So the magnitude of vector v, approximately 7.21. So now we know the magnitude of vector v is approximately equal to 7.21 units. How do we find the direction? Well, the direction a vector makes is the angle that it forms. We're going to start off with the standard uh, mathematical angle terminology where we're rotating from the positive x-axis in a counterclockwise direction. If we use that standard terminology, this angle here you see in green that we're going to call alpha is going to represent the direction of the vector. So how do we find that? Well, we're going to use trigonometry. After all, a right triangle is formed by this vector in its two vertical and horizontal components. If we do that, so we're going to use the tangent ratio because the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent sides. The tangent of angle alpha is going to be 4 over 6. Therefore, alpha is the inverse tangent or arctangent of 4 over 6. And when you compute that, you get that alpha is equal to approximately 0 0.5880 radians or 33.7 degrees. Typically in vectors, degrees are used. So now we actually know everything we need to know about this vector because we know its magnitude and direction. Vector v has a magnitude of 7.21 traveling at a direction of 33.7 degrees. If two vectors have the same magnitude and direction, they are called equivalent, and we use the equal sign to denote this. So if we take our good old vector v, so if we take our good old vector v, which has a magnitude of 7.21 in a direction of 33.7, and we had another vector in the plane called w, that let's say started at 5, 1, and 11, 5, we found its magnitude and slope, and we found that the magnitude of w and the direction of the w were also the same as that for v. We could then say that vector v equals vector w, and we would denote it just like this, v equals w. So two vectors that have the same magnitude and the same direction are equivalent, since that's what defines a vector after all. So we learned about the importance of vectors, what they are, and what they're composed of. A vector is a directed line segment that has a magnitude and direction. We learned how to compute both of those and to determine that vectors are equivalent when they have the same magnitude and direction.